I want to show you how you go from something like this with a lot of large triangles on the borders, you see these big things st sticking out, to something that looks clean like that. So something that basically includes only photogrammetry triangles, nothing, nothing beyond. I'm going to show you a few ways that you can do it in, in Reality Capture itself, but I think the best way you'll see will be with an external tool called Mesh Mixer. The first way we can uh, take care of this in Reality Capture is if you go to Advanced, in Reconstruction, Selection, Advanced, uh, and select Marginal Triangles. So what's that do? What that does is so it selects all the triangles that I guess are on the margins, but it doesn't do such a great job, right? I mean it. it selects the box around the mesh, but never these large triangles around. There's also uh, a setting set that says select large triangles, which you can change the parameters of, you know, it starts at 15, maybe let's go down to 10. Let's see, I think I have to deselect first and try that again. It's okay. I mean, it, it does a decent job, but sometimes it's also picking things that you want to keep like say here and what you can do is if you go to the lasso tool also in the selection box if you hold down uh typically if you if you just lasso something it just picks those triangles it's control z to go back if you hold down shift and lasso then it's deselecting something that's selected so you could do that that's that might be an option for you that's nice. All right. Um, and then if you're happy with that, you just press filter selection and it gets rid of those triangles. The end result is, I mean, you know, here, here, th this is the sort of result you get at the end. Um, for some meshes, I guess that's okay if it doesn't matter so much, but the result that I want is something with some nice, clean, remeshed edges. And this is something that Reality Capture cannot itself do. Um, it doesn't have really like a decimation and, and remeshing ability as far as I know. What we're going to be doing is using software called Mesh Mixer. I don't know if I talked about this in the last video, but it's a free, it's a free application, download it. It only supports OBJs and not FBXs. I think, I mean, it supports like other file formats like STL, but in terms of the OBJ and FBX, it's only OBJs. But before we import the mesh into Mesh Mixer, it's actually really important that you decimate the model that you want to the end target. So if this is 8 million triangles and you want to upload it to Sketchfab, like let's say you will most likely want it to have down, you want to decimate it down to like either 100k or 200k. So this, I would say 100,000 is decent. So simplify tool, and then from here, target triangle count, simplify. Um, if it's not, if it's not uh, respecting the target triangle count, then you probably have the type in uh, relative or maximum. So have that in absolute so that it's looking at what number you're inputting there. Uh, the reason why you want to decimate before you cut off the borders is because, let's say, yeah, I actually have a mistake to show you. Um, so this was the 8 million original mesh. I then exported it to mesh, mesh Mixer, Mesh Mixer, and did, you know, I cleaned up the borders and cut, cut it up. Then I realized I had to decimate down to 100K, right, to post the Sketchfab. And then I decimated it to 100k in in reality capture and here we go like it doesn't respect the boundaries it it decimates evenly and so the boundaries that you had created in mesh mixer end up getting um end up getting split up end up getting destroyed yeah split up so uh again the important thing an important step here is basically decimate your, your mesh to the end result that you want to have. So 100K or whatever. Let's export this. Um, change it to OBJ, which is typically what I work in. Um, let's also make a folder for it. Uh, door, uh, dirty. I typically call them dirty and clean for uh, before their, the borders are decimated. So let's open up Mesh Mixer. Here's our file. Um, 
would be J. Just drag, you can just drag it in, which is nice. Uh, sometimes it has the vertex colors with it, sometimes not. I think it, I might not have exported it from Reality Capture here. Let's, let's quick, take a quick look. Let's say I'm gonna replace it. Vertex colors are on. Okay, I don't know why it's not in here. Maybe I changed the shader. Uh, I don't know why it's not. Okay, that's it doesn't matter. So if, if I do this, then I'll, at least I will have a reference um, about the colors on this image in case they're not loading in Mesh Mixer for some reason. So plain cut, that's gonna be what we wanna use. Edit, plain cut. And you already see what it's cutting. Uh, basically here, from, from here, you can just drag a mouse, flip it around, that, that's the direction that it's gonna be cutting. If you think that's good, if you're happy with that, then if you do remesh fill, take a look what happens. It actually keep, it remeshes the border and then actually also adds triangles to keep the water tightness. Uh, we don't want it to be watertight. You don't really care about that. So I change, I, I went, con press control Z. I went back to the fill type from remesh fill to no fill. So it's still remeshing the, this edge, this border, see how it's very it's a smooth, straight line, but it's cut that out. So let's do this for all all at the edges that we don't want. Um, let's say if you press W also, you get to see the wireframe, which gives you a good sense of what's photogrammetry and what's not. So let's do this again here. That's decent. You know, even the angle matters not that much unless you have things coming up in the z-axis. Uh, so no fill, boom, that's looking nice. Maybe let's also cut that. Actually, um, let's come back to that. I'll, I'll show you another thing there. Um, nope. Actually, so if you, you know, if you do that, you can also just move the border. I think that's okay. No fill, accept. Um, there is this huge, large triangle there. Okay, so I guess we'll just cut this down here. Yeah, let's do that. Plain cut. Let's try to make it straight, just so, just for um, the sake. Let's see how I did it here. Did I keep it? Yeah, I had a little bit left of that little bit left I gotta turn off snapping uh, so the way I actually did that is if you press T for transform don't move the model do not move the model turn off enable snapping but that's good uh, if we go back to plain cut and do this now it's a smooth Smooth thing. Okay, so that looks good. Turn that to no fill. Okay, so we still have to get rid of that. Maybe that will require another plane cut. Plane cut. It's a little ugly. How did I get it so nice here? I think actually what I did here, okay. Here, this is actually the trick I wanted to show you, which I want to do with this corner also. Um, if we go now, instead of just doing plane cuts, I'm actually, I like to round out my corners, kind of like an old, old school photograph. You know, we have, uh, instead of a normal 16 by nine, we have like rounded corners. Let's go to sculpt. And if we go to robust smooth, um, now he, this basically smooths things out. This is also how you can clean up noise. Uh, not that, but maybe, actually, I'm not gonna touch any of the mesh because it's, just this rocky, you know, rocky surface. So there's nothing really there to be cleaned. But here, I can push back these things with the robust smooth. So bracket, either you can turn down the size that way, or I like to use the bracket buttons. And here, let's make it bigger again. Uh, if you, you have to, kind of hover over the thing so that it knows where you're pointing. And then I like to pull out 
so that if I do it here, obviously we're losing detail in the mesh that we don't want. So pull, I like put put my mouse on the part we I want and then pull out and then like so. Okay, so there, I'm gonna show you another trick actually. If you wanna do a selective um, a selective plane cut and you don't want it to cut anything else but only what you're pointing it to, you can also do that. So if you press S or just press select, it brings up this triangle select. So, so now you're in select mode, you have to go to edit here and then in edit there's plane cut. Not, not the edit down here, this is because you're doing a selective plane cut. So you see here, it's only selecting from what you had. Something like that, that looks good. No fill. Nice, that's looking decent. It's not a perfect straight down cut, but I don't think I, that was gonna happen anyway because um, I had more information down here than I did up here. So uh, I don't like this little bump. So let's let's go back to the Robot smooth, make it smaller. Oop, there you go. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's also do, do the top. Um, again, the top, if I do a plane cut straight down this way, it's going to cut out our, all, this, all this information that we don't want. So what we should do, again, is the selective uh, plane cut. Let's make it bigger. Let's just select all of the top like so cool and now we go to edit plane cut Shoop. that looks good nice cool so now you see we also have the back separated we have the back separated um, by the way if you to want to get rid of that printer bed that you're on it's control shift P so you can look at it from below. Um, yeah, so here you can just press S again for select. Double click on the back. Basically, any if you double click, it selects the, the entire component, anything that it's con uh, connected to. But since we cut out all the, all the edges and there wasn't any little triangles connecting here, you could just double, oh, actually that's not selected. That's interesting. And then if you press X, it gets rid of it. Great. So now we're pretty much there. I, I don't know if there's, okay, there's a little bit here. So in the select mode, you can also use it as a lasso. There you go. Ah, wait, there's some holes here. Okay, let's I'll also qu quickly show you how, if there's any holes that are introduced, you could uh, fix them. So either you could just select the whole thing yourself or um, you could actually just select what's on this border. So if you make it your selection tool small and double click on the border itself, I actually don't want this one yet. Uh, it selects everything on the border. And then if you press F, it replaces and remeshes that hole for you. So that's very nice. Do that again here. I'm, I most likely will do like a very mesh mixer focused tutorial on fixing things. I just wanted this to be about borders. It's already gone a little deeper than it needs to, um, but it's okay. I'll, at least I'm showing you, you know, what the full workflow is instead of just cutting things. Like sometimes you have to be, you have to do some more, um, uh, you have to do things beyond just cutting, but it's okay. It's okay. Hopefully this isn't uh, hard to follow. Let me know if, if I'm uh, if I went a little too quickly. Uh, there's also some floaties here. Um, let's just select that an X, and then this guy also. Boom. Boom. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm digging it. Let's export it. Um, let's say door clean. Door clean. You could also save your this mesh mixer file if you want to come back to it and change things. Um, so typically I do that because it takes up like almost no space. Door. Yes, I know I misspelled it. Okay, so 
uh, now we're back here. We have to import the model. So go to reconstruction import model. By the way, before you do, you could do all of this. Of course, you have to license your data set. Um, so that I had done that. I had done that before this tutorial, and I did my last video about how to make your uh, licensing each project really cheap. Uh, in case you want to do that. So I, I think I paid full price for this. I don't remember how much it was. It must have been only a few a few dollars or so because it's only 153 images. Um, so let's import the model. Tutorial, clean, use grid plane. Great, so make sure it le it's, it's in the same spot, right? You make sure you didn't move it. What do you press that? If you if you moved it in mesh mixer, you would sh you would you could see that it had moved, and that would make all the texture projection uh, completely off. So don't do that. I mean, if you were following if you were following these steps in the tutorial, you didn't move the mesh, so don't worry about that. So we're here. We're at hundred k, just under hundred k. Um, I want to unwrap it. Let's look at the unwrap parameters. I'm probably just going to dedicate one 4K texture. 4K, uh, one, uh, a, the style of maximal texture count instead of fixed texel count. The fixed texel size is basically if you really want to see the full resolution of your mesh, uh, of your texture, you do it that way. I'm just going to export, uh, up, upload this to Sketchfab. So let's do one 4K texture map. Here you can also see the texel resolution. That looks good. You can also see the parts that aren't going to be textured like that. Um, if you want that to be textured, you have to basically increase the tri triangle um, remove threshold. So let's take that and take a look. All right. So now, now it's going to texture everything. That's good. Let's click texture. All right, beautiful. The texturing is done. The everything looks nice. The lighting is beautiful. It actually doesn't even look low res for one 4K texture. I think it just goes to show that for smaller meshes, one 4K texture map sometimes works out pretty well. Um, but yeah, this looks great. All right, export it. So you export it and then upload it to Sketchfab and it's up there and it looks great. So this model I've already had on Sketchfab for quite a while. Um, it's actually free and downloadable. I've open sourced it, so feel free to use it for whatever. Um, I'll have the link in the description. But yeah, I hope this tutorial was easy and straightforward because I see a lot of people posting uh, screenshots and things of their models with just bad triangles on the sides. I get it. I used to be there. I didn't know how to use uh, mesh mixers, kind of be meshing stuff. So. From now on, I don't want to see large triangles on meshes <laughs> uh, if you're posting them. Uh, because now you know how to fix them. Do it.